You've heard of Bonnie and Clyde? My guest was Bonnie and Clyde put together. After a lifetime as a career criminal, she experienced God and pursued him with an even greater passion than she had for crime. She captured God's heart and received unique keys to the supernatural. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Katie Sousa, was a career criminal. It's hard to believe, Katie, you were in movies and television and, and, and modeling and got in with the fast crowd, got into drugs. Uh, and, and, uh, but what I don't picture is these high-speed chases <laughs> with guns. Yeah. I mean, that's Bonnie and Clyde stuff. Definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. how, did, how, how does a nice girl <laughs> like you get into this? You know, I'd grown up around guns my whole life. I had been a tomboy, so when I got into drugs and it totally turned my, my already volatile personality into somewhat of a terrorist personality, so it was natural for me to go that direction to start doing collections on other drug dealers and to start forcing people to pay drug debts at gunpoint. Just gun out point. of curiosity, you're forcing people to pay their drug debts. Mm. Uh, aren't you concerned that they might have a, uh, a gun and they're crazy from drugs anyway and your life is going to be over? You know, right at the moment, I never actually like thought about that. I just went in like head first to do it. But it did actually grow some very dangerous entanglements later on because as I would collect on bigger on bigger clients like biker clubs, they would start actually putting contracts out of my life and try to take my life many, many times. And, and then you, you, maybe, I don't know, did you get greedy or what was it? You started your own meth lab. Well, I got tired of buying and selling drugs. That's a real hassle. And so I said, well, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to be the top dog. I'm going to start manufacturing my own speed so that I can do good dope and I can sell dope and, and be treated somewhat like a rock star because if you're, if you're a meth cook, that's what you get. That's the kind of treatment that you get. Uh, so did reality really set in in 1999 when they finally got you? They finally uh, were going to send you away for, what, 11 and a half years? 12 and a half, yeah. They did. They caught me. They apprehended me. Federal marshals did. And my first year in lockdown, I spent in and out of the hole because I was fighting everybody, and I ended up actually attacking a, an officer. And so I was completely out of control like I was on the streets. And then one day God walked into that cell and he arrested me himself. Well, wait a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> God walked into that cell. What, what really happened between you and me? Okay. So I had found out that my co-defendant was going to testify against me. And that I was looking to up to 20 years in prison. Ouch. Right. So we go So out. that would sober you, I would uh, think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it made me really mad at the time as I wasn't walking with God yet. And so I went out to the yard and me, her and her girlfriend actually threw down, had a fight over it. So we got taken to lockdown. And while I'm in lockdown, this was like my umpteenth time in the hole. I'm in a cell that's covered with urine and feces and vomit, and it's freezing cold. And I just, all of a sudden, it hit me. Wow, I am tired. I have been doing this for 10 years on the streets. Now I'm doing it in here. And now I'm looking at all this time in prison. And, and I just felt like I was at the end of my rope. And I, at that point, I had a diabetic seizure. And when I woke up, I was done. I was completely done. And I said, you know what? I just give up. I surrender. And that was what God was waiting for, Sid. And then you actually you had these Bible studies and you started, what did you call it? A God pod <laughs> in prison? Yeah. Well, we, in my unit, we got so involved in God. We started doing the Bible studies and worship and, and praying for people and baptizing people in the but, shower. But you, but you started hearing God's voice and God said to you, you would get an early release. How, how specific was it? 
Well, I was meditating on God one night, and he came and he said, you know what, I'm going to do a jailbreak. I'm going to get you out. And then he even gave me the exact date he was going to do it. So I run out to the whole facility the next day, and I tell everybody what God told me. And at the end of the day, I got 1,200 women. They're laughing at me. And then, I can imagine. <laughs> right. And then my counselor gets wind of it. She's like, oh. So you think you're leaving on, on that certain date? And I'm like, I don't think so. I, I know so. God told me. She picks up the phone, Sid, looks me in the eye, picks up the phone, and calls the guards to come and escort me to the facility psychiatrist. Then I get to the facility psychiatrist, and she's told that I'm hearing the voice of God, so she wants to put me in suicide watch. Mm. But six months later, I won a case that I had in federal court, and the exact date the Lord gave me came to pass. What impact did it have on the uh, prisoners that knew <laughs> that you were, you were so crazy, they sent you to the psychiatrist because you knew the exact date and told everyone you were going to get out so early? It was a massive impact on everybody, and it was, it was great because even the unbelievers were like, wow, now we have something to believe in. Now we can see that God is real. And even my counselor, I can remember her calling me, uh, paging me after she found out what happened. She paged me into her office and she said, my fish are dying. Would you please pray for my fish? <laughs> <laughs> now, your faith must have been zoom. I'm just yeah, skyrocketed. Absolutely. It was. But you know what's so amazing to me is as fanatic, and that's the word. I mean, if fanatic is a good term for football. Why not for God? <laughs> you know, as fanatic as you were for crime. You're that fanatic for mm -hmm. the Lord. Yes. And why is he showing you principles that are keys, if you will, that speed prayers up supernaturally. Why you? Well, I mean, because we're doing a prison ministry now. We have an international prison ministry. And those people need everything God has. They need healing. They need deliverance. They need acceleration. They need uh, to be discipled quickly. Everything needs to move on a faster level because God's kingdom is coming in such an accelerated manner. Well, well, we got to keep you, up. You go, and she goes and she speaks in prisons now. And uh, th everything happens almost instantly. It's a whole acceleration. But it's a tool. Yeah. that Katie has been downloaded that will speed up your prayers in an amazing fashion, give you supernatural information in an amazing fashion. Don't go away. Be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Last year, God told me to host a supernatural tour to Israel. The tour was such a spiritual highlight we're going to do another one this year in Jerusalem. And we've purposely kept this top quality tour under $3,000, and that includes all taxes and tips. Call now for a free brochure at 1-800-929-4684, extension 1, or visit our website at sidroth.org. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Katie Sousa. And Katie, I am so excited that there is a supernatural way to speed up prayers that might have taken 20 years, uh, things that you've been contending with and contending and battling. It's all being compressed, I think, because the Messiah is coming soon. Amen. Now, tell me about this tool that you call it called Ascending and descending. Right. Well, ascending is not just meant to be a supernatural carnival ride. It's a powerful tool and it can cause acceleration because when you can ascend up into heaven, because we have the legal right to do so, you can get whatever's in heaven and bring it back down to earth and cause the promises that God is speaking in your life to happen in an increased and accelerated manner. And we see the example of that in the Jacob and the ladder. Remember that story? Yes. Uh, Jacob sees a ladder, right? It's going from heaven to earth. And at the top of the ladder, God is standing there and he's speaking these promises over Jacob. Okay, and as God's doing that, the angels are ascending up the ladder, then descending mm -hmm. back down. Okay, that's kind of a strange order. You would think that they would descend first, Sure, right? they're coming from heaven. They come ascend. Right, but see, descend Hebrews down. says, Hebrews 1 says that angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to us. They're already, there's angels already down here. They're already helping us. So that day when Jacob saw that, what happened was this. As God was speaking promises 
over Jacob's life, the angels that were already down here at work did what angels do. The scripture says that angels hearken to the voice of the Lord. So they heard God speaking the promises. They ascended up into heaven, got the stuff that they needed to make the promises for Jacob's life come to pass, and then brought them back down to earth and released them. Okay, how does that affect me? Those were angels doing it. Are well, you telling me I can do that? Yes, we're seated in heavenly realms with Christ. Seated right. is past tense, meaning we are already there. Christ already won the right for us to be there. And men in the Bible ascended into heaven. You saw you know, Moses and, right. and Aaron and the 72 elders. They went up, they ate and they drank which tells me they went up in their bodies too. Paul talks about the man that went up into the third heavens, whether in the body or out of the body, he didn't know. And John, John the Revelator went up into the heavens and he got all the downloads for the book of Revelations. So you can see that they went up and they got these encounters with God and they also got revelation and enablements and brought them back down here to earth. All right, give me an example of how you ascended and got information. Tell me about that, those farmers. Okay, so I'm on tour. I'm in Oklahoma City, and it's harvest time. I'm staying at some wheat farmer's house, right? And they had, all the farmers in that area had lost their harvest for the five years previous, right at the end when they were going to harvest. It's harvest time again, and suddenly this huge storm comes, and there's torrential rain and 60-mile-an-hour winds, and hail was on the way, which all destroys the crops. So they're going to miss another harvest. Another harvest. Okay, so I'm, we're all sitting there on the back yard looking at the wheat fields going, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, bind the storm, we muzzle the storm, be quiet in the name of Jesus, and it's not working. And as we're doing this, the Lord speaks to me, says, why are you trying to battle something that's originating in the second heavens from underneath it? You don't even know what's going on. Why don't you go and ascend up there and find out what the strategy is of the enemy so you can have the victory? So I excused myself. I went inside the room. I said, Lord, you just told me to go. So I'm believing you're going to take me right now. And I was there, Sid. I was there in a second. And I saw the strategy of the kingdom of darkness. What did you see? I saw two dragons, a red one and a black one. Now, I looked at those colors later on. To be in the red means to be owing, to be indebted. Yeah. To be in the black means an area blackened with drought. You see, the assignment of the enemy all those years was to let those farmers put all their energy and their time and their water and their, and their fertilizer and everything into their crops and then cause them to lose their harvest right at the end so that they would be in the red, owing. So they'd be an area blackened with drought. And so there was the strategy of the enemy, and now I could see it because I knew how to use the tool of ascending. And so I'm up there, and I look down, and without even asking, God has supplied me with a sword. That's just how it works in the realm. You have everything you need. And I took it out, and I only had to take like three or four strikes at this red dragon, and he went down. I turned around, I took one strike at the black dragon, and he went down too. Now think about that. They, they harvested that year. In 20 but, minutes. But, but wait a second, all, all the storms and everything were coming towards them? And they, the storm stopped, the, the fields dried up enough to where they could get their harvest in. After all those years, a major breakthrough, and it happened in 20 minutes of ascending. Ascending is a powerful, powerful tool. But it also helps you with physical things. Uh, tell me about your skin condition. Okay, well, that is with the glory cloud. So can I go into that? Sure. Your buddy, David Herzog, talks about that. Years ago, he had a teaching about how God used the creative power of the glory cloud to cause, to create the whole world. In Genesis 1, the earth is void, and then the spirit of God, or the glory, came down and hovered over the void of the earth, and then God spoke into that void, into the cloud, and said, let there be light, and bang, there's light. So there's creative power in the glory. Okay, so I'm one night. I'm in my worship time with God. God, and in our worship, God's presence or his glory will become manifest and become tangible because that's what the scripture says. So as I'm worshiping, the glory just exploded. It exploded so much that my arms felt like they weighed 200 pounds. I was pinned to the bed. I had burning tangible glory on my face. And what happened was this, is a few days before that, I had found a patch of melanoma skin cancer on my leg. Mm. And I prayed for it. I put my hand on it. I prayed for it. And I didn't feel anything and nothing happened. But now in the glory, in the presence of the glory, which has light in it too, because the glory cloud has light in it, I began to command that patch to die in Jesus' name. Three days later, Sid, it dries up like a little flake of skin, and I just literally flicked it right off my leg, and it was healed. Uh, you know what's kind of interesting to me 
is that the latest things uh, in skin care is to use lasers, which yes. are light. How much more the light of God? Uh, but we'll get into that on another show. But what I'm what I'm interested in is there is supernatural banking in the glory. Well, there's a bank crisis in the United States of America and many other countries. How about supernatural banking in the glory? Don't go away. Be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Are you tired of praying over and over again for God to answer your prayers without success? To heal you, prosper you, help you solve the difficulties you are facing. Katie Souza wants to teach you how to ascend into heavenly realms so you will see the answers to your prayers accelerated. Call now to receive two power-packed teachings by Katie Souza on five audio CDs, Ascending into the Supernatural and Banking in the Glory. For a donation of $25, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1274. Katie includes biblical principles and first-hand experiences. Follow her easy-to-understand step-by-step instructions. These two teachings will help you operate in the glory zone by ascending above the demonic clatter into the heavenlies to get God's strategy and victory. Obtain supernatural keys to break the curse of debt and supernaturally obtain wealth. See answers to your prayers accelerated and so much more. This is a supernatural tool to help you achieve your destiny, to be an integral part of the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit in history. Don't miss out on getting these two power-packed teachings by Katie Sousa on five audio CDs, Ascending into the Supernatural and Banking in the Glory for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1274. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1274 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Katie Sousa. So, Katie, what is this banking in the presence of God, banking in the glory? What do you mean by that? Well, in this time of famine in, in the United States, boy, we need all the help we can get. Sure. So we need tools in the natural and tools in the supernatural, too. And there is creative power in the glory cloud, so we can utilize that to begin to create finances and provisions for us. And i got a bunch of stories, so I'll just share one I, with you. Oh, I, I love it. Tell me about this uh, $21,000 debt. You think you got problems. Tell me about that, Katie. Okay, so here we are, this fledgling ministry, and we've got we've accrued $21,000 with the debt. So I put my whole team on a 21 day fast. And I said, Lord, you got to give me keys to being able to break this debt. And so during the fast, he gives me Psalm 100, which says we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. He said, this is one of the ways that Jesus opened the heavens to get the glory cloud to come and caused a multiplication of provisions. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, where is that? And he says, I want you to read the story in Luke nine about the multiplication of the fish and the, and the bread. So I go to Luke 9. Jesus is feeding 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. And I saw it. I saw exactly how he did it, Sid. It said that, quote, Jesus took the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven, praised God and gave thanks. What's going on? Jesus knows I got to feed a bunch of people with this little bit. I need the power, the creative power of the glory cloud. So that's why he first, quote, looked up to heaven. Hmm. He's looking for the open heaven to get the cloud to drop. And the next thing it says is then he's, he, praising God, gave thanks. What's he doing? He's doing a Psalm 100, entering into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. There's gates in the heavens. You, open, you can open them with your thanksgiving. And then the glory cloud will fall and our praise, God's presence or his glory will inhabit our praises. So he's looking up to heaven. He says, okay, now I need to get it open. I'm using my thanksgiving and praise. He gets it open. The cloud drops. And the next thing it says is this. Then he spoke, he spoke a blessing over the bread. What's he doing? He's doing what God did in Genesis 1 when God created the world. God had his glory cloud there and he spoke into the cloud. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Jesus gets the presence of the glory. He lifts the little bit of bread he has up into it, and he speaks a blessing over the bread. He's literally commanding it to prosper or to multiply, and it does in the creative power of the cloud. 
Okay, that's well and good. That is Jesus. You learn these tools, if you will. Right. How does it play out with Katie, who's $21,000 in debt? Okay, so I see this revelation. I'm like, that's how he did it. I can do it too. So I did the exact uh, same thing. You really thing. have a childlike faith, don't you? <laughs> you do. Well, if the Bible says that I just believe it. <laughs> and you also get revelation teaching. You're not like a normal teacher. You right. teach by revelation. Yes. Uh, the, uh, Jesus fast. You, you had, uh, I want to go back to the 21,000, okay. but this Jesus, the, uh, you have a fast. You call it a Jesus fast. What is that? Totally focusing on Jesus, just worshiping, you know, doing songs that are about him, reading all the gospels, reading all the prophecies, reading everything about Jesus, spending our time meditating on him, speaking with him in our heart, and just doing that in a long gated period of time. And what happens is you begin to carry him and birth him when you do that. Okay, okay. you owe 21000 What do you So do? here I am, I see, the, I see it. I was like, wow, that's how Jesus did it. Oh my gosh, I can do the same thing, right? right. So I began to do exactly what Jesus did. I had $3,000 to pay on my $21,000 debt. So I took that little bit of money, like Jesus took his little bit of bread and fish, and I began to do a Psalm 100. Enter into the gates of heaven with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And I just pressed and pressed and kept my focus and kept praising and thanking God. And when I felt the atmosphere change. I felt the burning of the glory. I felt like a heaviness on my shoulder. I knew the tangible presence of the glory was there and I had creative power. So I lifted, I did what Jesus did. I lifted up my bread into the cloud and I spoke into the cloud a, a blessing over it. I, I commanded it to multiply. Well, the day after the 21 day fast ended, we got a check for $21,000. Katie, as you're sharing this story, the atmosphere is changing. Yes. I believe that, I don't, I don't know what you want to pray for those that are watching, but I believe with this atmosphere changing, you should move into this right now and pray. Jesus. It's not only to break your debt, because you can do that first, then you can also cause finances to multiply for you. I, I took, I went, I sent it up into heaven and got a, a diamond that my husband had. My husband had been out of business for nine months and we needed, we needed financial income. I sent it up to heaven, got the, a diamond, came back down and God said, now command it to manifest in the glory. I did. And we got a $250,000 miracle. You now, can now, do the but, same but, but, thing. But, but, the, the diamond though was a, uh, it wasn't a real diamond. It, it was a, you saw it in the spirit. I saw it in the spirit and God says, I said, what is that? He goes, it represents what I have for you in the glory. And then you prayed for it to manifest as in heaven on earth. And how much money came in? Quarter of a million dollars. It's it, it, now a lot of people are having difficulty believing this, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is you have found a supernatural key. Now, if we are going into an economic crisis worldwide, and the Bible talks about the, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous, there will be a wealth transfer. I believe that God has given you a key towards the wealth transfer. Yes, once you learn how to cultivate the glory and speak into the cloud, then you can use this all the time for any situation, to break debt, to cause an increase of financial income. It, it's Once you have the tool, you can use the tool over and over again. We've had so many financial miracles, $100,000, $32,000. All right, very briefly, give us a jump start on how we can ascend up into heaven and de get our answers to our prayers and bring them back to earth just like the angels did for Jacob. Well, use your faith. Use your faith. It says that by faith that Enoch was translated into heaven without dying. Pray that for us right okay. here. Right now, I just want to break off anything that's on you that would hinder you from believing that you have the legal right to ascend into heaven and get everything you need to cause your promises to come to pass in an accelerated manner. So I pray for you now. Just receive it right now. I command everything that would hinder you from ascending into the heavenly realms to be gone right now, right now. 
in the name of Jesus and for you to, by faith, be able to go into the heavenly realms and bring back everything you need to live life and life abundant. And I decree an open heaven for you that you would become knowledgeable about the glory, how to cause it to manifest in your house, how to bring it in, how to open the heavens and have a tangible manifestation of the glory cloud coming into your home so you can begin to write your monthly bills and your checks and speak a, a, a command of blessing over them. So every time you pay your bills, you're going to have a multiplication. I decree that for you right now in Jesus name. Katie, you know, when you're talking about ascending and descending, I'm thinking about one day, very soon, a shofar, a ram's horn is going to blow and we are going to ascend. But we're not going to ascend to get something to come back. We're going to ascend to be with Jesus. And I, I, I can almost hear that ram's horn, that shofar blowing right now. I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to ascend, especially with the glory level that's on this show with, as I'm talking with Katie. But in order to ascend, you have to be a spirit being. Your spirit has to have control over everything in your life. First, you need the life of God in your spirit. You need your sins, just as Katie, when she was in prison, had an and gave up. It's time for you to give up and make Jesus your Messiah and Lord. I'm not talking religion. I'm talking about intimacy with the living God because he loves you. You are special. Believe it. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and your sins are washed away. You've repented of them and asked Jesus to live inside of you and be the Lord of your life. Do it now, now. Are you tired of praying over and over again for God to answer your prayers without success? To heal you, prosper you, help you solve the difficulties you are facing. Katie Souza wants to teach you how to ascend into heavenly realms so you will see the answers to your prayers accelerated. Call now to receive two power-packed teachings by Katie Souza on five audio CDs, Ascending into the Supernatural and Banking in the Glory. For a donation of $25, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1274. Katie includes biblical principles and first-hand experiences. Follow her easy-to-understand step-by-step instructions. These two teachings will help you operate in the glory zone by ascending above the demonic clatter into the heavenlies to get God's strategy and victory. Obtain supernatural keys to break the curse of debt and supernaturally obtain wealth. See answers to your prayers accelerated and so much more. This is a supernatural tool to help you achieve your destiny to be an integral part of the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit in history. Don't miss out on getting these two power-packed teachings by Katie Sousa on five audio CDs, Ascending into the Supernatural and Banking in the Glory for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1274. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1274 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today next week on It's Supernatural. My guest was driving her car towards a head-on collision until angels, literally angels showed up and they held up a sign that said, danger.